In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about purchasing contracts in SAP S4 HANA using Fiori. I'm here on the Fiori launchpad and we navigate to the application called Manage Purchase Contracts. Select this application over here. We are forwarded to the start screen to manage our purchasing contracts. We will now first create a purchasing contract. Just a small remark, those purchasing contracts you can see over here are agreements with our suppliers to supply materials or even services under negotiated conditions within a certain period. We will now first create a new purchasing contract and then we will see how we can use this purchasing contract. So click on create. We will now go through the different sections you can see over here. Let's start with the header information. We provide a purchasing contract name. Let's just say test contract one. Then we must choose a supplier, which is one of our business partners. I will just take this one over here. By the way, I have a whole playlist about the business partner. I will leave you a link in the description of this video. You can see the purchasing organization was filled automatically out of the supplier master. Then we have the contract type. This is of utmost importance. As you can see, there are different contract types we can choose from. The main difference lays between so-called quantity contracts or value contracts. Quantity contracts are agreements for a company to order a certain quantity of a product during a specified period while those value contracts are also agreements for a company to order certain materials and services received within a specific time period up until a certain value. This is the main difference. We will say quantity contract for now. Let's go to the general information section. Then we must include a target value for our contract. So let's just say 10,000 euro. We need to state a purchasing group, which is a group of buyers responsible for our purchasing activities. Let me just choose 001. Then quite important, a validity. This contract should be valid up until the end of the year. And the company code was also copied from our supplier master. Let's go to the delivery and payment section. Here we can include some input terms and also payment terms. As you can see, the value was also copied from our supplier master. Then we go to the reference section. Here we can state some more reference information if necessary to identify this contract more easily. Let's go to the header conditions. In this section, we could define a so-called condition type. But this really depends on your customizing in the system. Such a condition type could be, for instance, a cash discount. For now, we will leave it as is. Then we go to the item section. So here we define the items that are subject to our purchasing contract. So the items we agreed upon with our supplier. We can choose the item category, either standard consignment or subcontracting. We will say standard for now. The others you can see over here are special topics. I explained to you in other sessions. I will leave you the links in the description of this video. Then we can choose here an account assignment category. For now, we will leave it blank. And then we choose the material. So let me insert a number and that's fine. Most of the information is already derived from our material master. Here we must insert our target quantity, let's say 1000 and the net order price per ordered quantity, let's say 10. So far so good. We now specify our plant as well. And then we click here on the arrow to inspect the details. We are forwarded to the detailed screen. Over here you can see the header information that was copied. Then we have the general information. So whether there's a single or a distributed account assignment. Also, if we want to update our purchasing info records, if they exist, then we have the quantity and price section where we can see our target quantity and the net order price per unit. In the conditions tab, we can see the conditions for our purchasing contract item. And also further down, we can see all the different values. You can see the same if you open a normal purchase order. Let's go to the supplier confirmation control section where we could select that the confirmation is required and also include some planned delivery information. We have the GRIR control section, quite important, where we can say amongst others that a goods receipt is required and also an invoice receipt is required or if this goods receipt should be non-valuated. And then we have here the hook for our invoice receipt and the goods received based invoice verification. In the delivery terms, we could include some Inco terms classification and then you can see the account assignment. Then we have here a product compliance section. If this product should be relevant for product compliance, the delivery information copied from our supplier master and the notes and attachment section. For now, this is fine. Let's click on apply and we are back in the overview of our purchasing contract. Now we click on partner. Here we can see the different partner functions derived from our business partner master. For now, this is fine. We have an approval section where we can define a kind of workflow for this purchase contract creation, the product compliance section again, but this time not on item level, 
but on the overall contract level. And also here we have a notes and attachment section. So far so good, we will click on create. And now you can see the purchase contract was created successfully. Here's the number, let's copy this number. And now we will create a purchasing requisition out of the purchasing contract we just created. So we navigate to the application called Manage Purchase Requisitions Professional. Select this application, now click on create and we are forwarded to the creation screen of our purchasing requisition. We must choose a document type. This document type will determine many parameters, amongst others the number our purchasing requisition will receive. If you want to find out more about the document type, I will leave you a link to another video of mine in the description of this one. Now we can click here on automatic source determination. And if there is no other source for our material, despite the purchase contract that we just created, then the information for our purchasing requisition will be automatically filled with the information that stems from our purchase contract. Let's go to the item section, click on create, material. Now we include our plant, 1010, then the item description, let's say test, and then our material with which we just created our purchase contract. A quantity, let's say 100. And then if we go to the source of supply tab, we can click on assign source of supply. And here we can select different sources of supply, the info record and scheduling agreement, as well as the fixed supplier. I already explained you in my playlist for materials management. I will leave you the link in the description of this video. However, if we select contract, then you can see our contract was found. This is the one we just created. Select this one and now all the information will be filled accordingly. Now we can click on apply and that's basically it. We can click on create and here you can see the number of the purchase requisition. Now we will create a purchase order out of the purchase requisition. So we go to manage purchase orders, this one over here, click on create, then provide a purchasing group, a purchasing organization, company code and then our supplier and enter. Most of the fields are now filled and when we come to the purchase order item section, we click on add from document. Now you can select that we want to add items either from a purchase order, info record, our purchasing contract or purchase requisition. So as we created the purchasing requisition, we will take this one right now. We could also have skipped the purchase requisition process. So you can create a purchase order directly out of the contract, but I have shown you the whole way with the purchase requisition. So we take purchase requisition, insert our supplier. Here you can see the purchase requisition we just created. So we select it and click on add items. Now all the items are populated with the information out of our purchasing requisition. And as you remember, the purchasing requisition took its information from the purchasing contract. Now we can click on order to create the purchase order. And the purchase order was created successfully. Last but not least, Let's now go back to the Manage Purchase Contracts application to inspect the utilization of our purchase contract. Please recall that we ordered a quantity of 100 with a net price of 10 per unit. So meaning that we ordered for a value of 1000. Let's click on Manage Purchase Contracts. We will search for our contract and here you can see that the consumption now increased to 10%. As you recall, we created this purchase contract with an agreed amount of 10,000 and we utilized 1000 due to the purchase order we created. If the consumption rate would be 100 and we would try to create a new purchase order or purchase requisition with regard to this purchase contract, the system would hinder us from doing so. We would need to increase the target value of our purchase contract. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. It took a lot of effort, so I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.